Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Top 5 Total War video. It's been quite some time since I've done one of these, because I just haven't had any really good ideas. But today I think we got a good one, we're covering the Top 5 Total War Cheating AIs. So by that, I want to clarify, is advantages that the AI get that are just basically freebies, whether that be free money, free armies, immunity to certain mechanics in the game, we're going to count down the the game AIs that give their their factions, the AI controlled factions, the most amount of cheats. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump in now to number five. Coming in at number five is the AI in Rome Total War. Now it's not immediately apparent that these guys do get a massive amount of cheats, and by comparison to other Total War games, it's not really that big of a deal either. On the campaign side of things, the AI in Rome Total War don't really appear to get any cheats. They struggle with public order, they can struggle with their finances, they don't spew out entire armies instantly, they more or less play by the same rules as the player. But where they really get their bonuses is on the battlefield, and it becomes very noticeable at the beginning of a campaign, and barely noticeable at the end of a campaign, because it's a static buff. They get, I think, an approximate plus 7 melee attack, plus 7 melee defense, and plus 7 morale bonus to all of their units. Now, in the early game, that's a big buff. That essentially turns a peasant unit into essentially a Hastati unit by comparison. However, it is very easy for the player to bypass these, these bonuses by simply using basic tactics. Kill the enemy general, all of their leadership will basically disappear, sorry, all of their morale, too, used to Warhammer 2 these days, all of their morale will disappear, and then a charge into their flank will basically rout any army, regardless of the difficulty rating that you're playing on. So, even though they do get massive cheats, it can be barely noticeable if you know what you're doing. And so that's why they're getting the number 5 spot on this list. They do get a lot of cheats, but it's very easy to bypass them. Anyway, let's move on now to number 4. Coming in at number 4 is the AI in Total War Shogun 2. Now Shogun 2 is largely considered by many people to be one of the most difficult Total War games, and it's not because they get loads of cheats. Even when you play on Legendary difficulty, you will certainly notice that they get significant advantages, but that's the case in most of the Total War games, and far more apparent than the other, other items on this list. What makes the AI more competent in Total War Shogun 2 is the fact that Shogun 2 is actually a very simple Total War game. It does not have as many mechanics as some of the other ones that are on this list, and therefore it's a lot easier for their AI to manage the few mechanics that they need to. When the games get more and more complex, the AI needs to be more and more adept at managing it and has more opportunities with which it can fall on its own sword essentially. Because Shogun 2 doesn't have that much, it tends to be able to manage it just fine. But that doesn't mean it doesn't get that much cheats, it certainly does, it's just that it seems about balanced based on the difficulty rating, you know, of Legendary Difficulty. Legendary Difficulty is supposed to be particularly challenging, and I think in Shogun 2 it is the, ex exactly the right amount of cheats. Sometimes it can certainly be frustrating, but once you get your head around it, it's really, it's, it really is quite manageable. Anyway, the crux of where they get their cheats is largely down to their final finances here. So at the beginning of a campaign you'll notice that a one settlement faction might be able to field a full stack or even two full stacks despite only having one level one settlement and you might be sitting there scratching your head going how the hell can they afford that. It largely comes down to the clan estates. This is where in pretty much all total war games that the AI gets a big advantage at the beginning but less so at the end of the campaign where difficulty starts to slide off a little bit. It's not so the difficulty rating becomes essentially irrelevant once you reach turn 100. So, regardless of which faction you play, you'll end up getting 1,200 gold for free, essentially. And the AI gets something similar, except it's usually a lot more than that. Whilst I don't know what the exact number is, it is significantly more. Now, they might get some additional tax bonuses as well throughout the campaign, but this is where the crux of their cheat comes in. Now. They will also get some battle buffs, some public order buffs, and that kind of stuff so they can manage their empire a little bit better. But this is where the difficulty rating comes in. With them being able to get more money, that's how they can field more armies. 
And when you only have a half stack going up against a full stack, it doesn't matter how really good you are, that's going to be an insanely difficult battle that's going to push you to the edge of your limits, and it largely just comes down to money. Economy is hugely important in Total War games, as I've said many, many times before, and giving the AI cheats in the, in the money department makes it easy for the AI to actually become competent at what they need to do, which is essentially take out the player. And that's why it's getting the number four spot on this list. Let's now move on to number three. Taking the number three spot is Total War Rome 2. Now, just like in Shogun 2, legendary difficulty is of course supposed to be fairly difficult. The AI needs to get bonuses on top of that. That makes sense. But where it starts to get ridiculous here is where they just ignore entire mechanics of the game. Now, just like in Shogun 2, they'll get extra money, they'll get extra recruit slots, they'll get uh, extra food, so on and so forth, just so that they don't essentially collapse early in the game due to uh, mismanaging the, their empires, which the AI was very much prone to doing uh, in the early versions of Rome Total War, where they just didn't manage their food at all, and so most of the, the enemy factions would just be starving. Even if they had a full stack, they have a full stack of starving units, and so it was very easy to get rid of them. So in order to counter that, of course, they got bonuses to their food, and whilst now it is possible to see them starve their armies, it is, it's possible to see it, it's extremely rare. But that's not really the, the biggest cheat that the AI gets. Now, arguably, one of the most annoying and frustrating and difficult things to deal with in Rome 2 is the politics system. It requires constant attention in order to make sure that you don't get a civil war. And if you do get a civil war, that you basically make sure it's to your favor. It can be really irritating. Now, here's the big thing. It requires your constant attention every single turn. You've got to manage the politics system. I've been sent in a lot of disaster campaigns where people just didn't manage their politics very well. You've got to do it from turn one to the day you finish uh, your campaign. Always make sure your politics is under control. Don't let that loyalty get too low. Keep it under control. Here's the thing. The AI in Rome 2 does not have to manage politics at all. You will never ever see them have a civil war or have any negative issues due to politics. Giving them a free pass on one of the most difficult aspects of this game. Most of your excess money that you get, you know, after you've spent it on your armies, will probably be spent on making politics go away. Stop annoying me. Stop trying to civil war, you know, constantly trying to either hire new members and make them loyal or securing loyalty. It'll be a constant source of you losing money. And the AI, they're just immune to it. So that is one way in which they just get massive cheats over the player when they just don't have to deal with that hurdle at all. And that's why it's getting the number three spot on this list. Now let's move on to number two. Coming in at number two is Total War Attila. Now this is where things start to go from being pretty cheating AI to getting fucking bonkers level cheats. So just like with Shogun 2 and in Rome 2, the AI gets you know money cheats, uh, public order cheats, things that they make their campaign a little bit easier, well actually a lot easier for them to manage, especially on legendary difficulty. They're sort of immune to their internal politics systems, just like in Rome 2. However, it is possible for the AI to have civil wars, but I think it's largely due to their integrity system. So they, most of the time you will see them have 100% integrity, but it is possible for them to get to zero and essentially have a secession force based on that. But honestly, that's not where, that's not even the beginning of where things really get off. So it's also well known that the Huns get a lot of cheats you know, when they're controlled by the AI. Free armies, and uh, they don't have to pay any upkeep for them, and if an army ever gets destroyed, it is immediately regenerated in the steps. If you ever wipe out the Huns entirely in a single turn, which I have done before, uh, the Huns will regenerate in full the next turn. So it's not like they just get one army per turn to sort of slowly, well not slowly, but quickly regenerate. It's, it's pretty much instant. They will come back in full, eight to ten armies straight away next uh, in the next turn so if you happen to exist out here and you wipe them out they will literally come back straight in your territory so it's a it is a bit of an oversight i think by creative assembly that they never really addressed now that's not even the biggest cheat of them all now total war attila is largely a sort of apocalyptic game where it's sort of like the end of the world the huns are coming there's climate change right and snow starts to cover the entirety of, of the map, 
Um, it covers like 75% of the map in the late game for um, for most of the months. Only summer is there no snow anywhere. Now, one of the big things is attrition in Total War Attila. It is massive for the player. So if I was to take an army, so I'm playing as the Huns in this campaign here, and if I was just to walk through here, I will take a pretty decent amount of attrition just by moving here. Now, the AI does take attrition, but they don't take attrition by walking through snow. They only take attrition when they end their turn, not in encamp stance, in the snow. Now, what that means, it means attacking the AI throughout snowy regions is virtually impossible because what will end up happening is you'll attack them, they probably will run away because you you have a stronger army, and even though they'll run, they won't take any attrition, and as you pursue them, you'll take attrition chasing them. Even though your faction is not immune to attrition and neither is theirs, doesn't matter. You'll see the Sassanids run through the snow here, frolicking around in, in uh, winter, in forced march, taking next to no attrition, only during the end turns and only by a, a, like a tiny little amount at, at, at each interval. Whereas if you decide to go pursuing them, you basically can't. You have to move in tiny, tiny little intervals and constantly in camp, or else your entire army gets obliterated through to attrition. It is by far one of the biggest sheets in Total War, and it's present in all factions, all AI factions in Total War Attila. So my advice to you is during the winter months, during the three quarters of the year that is winter in the late campaign basically don't move anywhere and just solidify it's a very defensive total war game anyway let's now move on to the biggest offender the biggest cheater in the total war franchise let the number one spot taking the number one spot on this list was always going to be total war warhammer 2 the degree to which the AI cheats in Warhammer 2 is actually ridiculous. Now, part of the reason that it actually gets ridiculous is because it's actually lopsided. Certain factions get more cheats than others, which allows them to dominate other AI factions, which allows them to actually present themselves as massive forces in the endgame. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I want to go on to the cheats that affect all of the other factions first. So. Every cheat that the AI gets in Total War Attila is pretty much also available for the AI in in uh, Total War Warhammer 2. So there are some factions that get no upkeep on their army that are able to spawn armies for free. Uh, every faction will get a large sum of money per turn as, as a cheat. So on and so forth. Every other Total War game recently has got that, so that's nothing new. But what's new to Total War Warhammer 2 is the experience cheat. So if we have a look at an army here, now, this army here may never have seen combat. I know it has seen combat, but it, as an example, it probably hasn't seen very much combat. And yet, most of the units in this army are extremely experienced. But here's the thing, you don't notice, like, a variation in experience. You don't see, like, one unit with, like, one, and one unit with nine. So, what this ends up telling me is which units have been recruited first, because every unit in this game will gain a base amount of experience every turn, and the amount is actually quite massive. It's roughly around 600 to 1,000 experience every turn. Now, how much is that? That is enough to rank up a unit to basically rank one straight away, and then get a rank every other turn. So, every two turns, I'll gain essentially one extra rank. Now, what that will mean is that in the early stages of your or your campaign your inexperienced armies that might have one or two tiers of experience might end up going up against a norskan raider army that hasn't seen combat and yet has nine tiers of experience across all of its units make, making your army inferior kind of unfairly now on legendary difficulty i think that that is okay because it's supposed to be challenging you're supposed to have unfair advantages against you but it gets a little bit ridiculous sometimes, so I can certainly see where people are complaining about it. So that's one area where the AI gets some massive cheats. It doesn't seem like it at first that the experience buff would make that big of a difference, but it really does. Now the next thing, and this is the biggest way that the AI cheats, is the confederation bonuses that they get. Because it's only some factions that get it. There are some races in this game that can't confederate or don't really have enough races to confederate with. So, for example, the Vampire Coast cannot confederate. So, because they don't confederate, they don't get that cheat. 
And so they usually end up getting stomped by races that do confederate with one another. Another example is the Tomb Kings. The Tomb Kings usually do get wiped out by other races because they don't confederate. And one or two races that survive almost every single time unless the player deliberately takes them out early is the Empire and the Dwarfs. And the reason that they always end up on top is because they have confederations of plenty. The Empire is situated in an area in which they are able to confederate with like nine other factions quite easily, and they do so before the Chaos Invasion even begins, allowing them to have 50, 60 regions without ever really having to conquer anything. Same thing with the Dwarfs, although the thing is with the Dwarfs, and even though they end up being stronger than the Empire usually, the re one of the reasons they get so strong is because they have one of the weakest factions in the game right next to them. The Greenskins, now even though the Greenskins do get loads of cheats, those cheats end up being worthless because Dwarf Settlements get are so strong in order resolve that Greenskins are just unable to capture them. I've seen three full stack Greenskin armies try to attack a Dwarf Miner Settlement and get annihilated. And so, if they can't even take any settlements away from the Dwarves, the Dwarves with just a few armies are able to conquer them. Now, the Dwarves won't have just a few armies because they end up snowballing big time. Because here's the thing about the Dwarves, now the Dwarves are really the biggest offenders when it comes to cheats, because everything is like stacked in their favor. They've got Confederations of Plenty, they've got Zufbar, they've got Karak Kadrin, they've got, you know, um, Karak, uh, sorry, um, Clan Engrund, Karak Kirin. Barak Var, they've got a lot of lot of guys, a lot of very strong factions around them that can confederate. But on top of that, the more settlements they get, the more rune forges that they get, the more global recruitment that they get, the faster they can recruit from any region in the game. And this is why you'll often see them recruit new armies almost instantly, because they're essentially able to recruit like 20 units a turn through the global recruitment, unless you put a stop to them. It is imperative that as a player that intends to fight the dwarves, that you do not let the dwarves get to what happened in this particular campaign. This isn't particularly that late in the campaign, and this is not unheard of, to see that the dwarves get this many settlements this early on and I would argue that the Empire probably has somewhere between 60 and 70 settlements by this point right now largely due to confederations now as a player you can confederate as well but you will never be able to confederate anywhere close to the degree and speed at which the AI will confederate in fact they will confederate so fast that even if your campaign is going perfectly they will out confederate you in terms of size I've had campaigns that were going amazingly well and yet the Empire was still getting bigger and bigger than me faster because they, every time I gained a few settlements they just confederated another one of their elect accounts and so it gets a massive disadvantage in that regard but you know that's part of the challenge of the campaign the empire I suppose is supposed to be a very strong faction they are the front line towards chaos and currently the chaos invasion is a complete joke anyway that's why the uh, the AI in Warhammer 2 gets the number one spot. They are by far the biggest cheaters, but I'm totally okay with it because I still think it's an amazing game. And you do have the tools that you need in every single scenario to win with every single race on Legendary Difficulty. It is possible, and not just possible, it is quite doable as well. You just need to have a bit of know-how, that's all, a bit of practice. You know, don't pick up the game and then immediately go into Legendary Difficulty, it does take some time to learn it. Anyway, that's the end of this video, let me know what you think, whether or not you think there are some races that should have been on this, sorry, some races, some, um, some games that should have been on this list, or some of the games that were on this list that you think shouldn't have been on it. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.